Porsche fans, Daniel here and welcome back to the Jet Fuel Only channel. Today, the GT4 is getting some suspension parts. That's right, we're installing camber plates and adjustable rear tow links. And I think besides over axle pipes, the camber plates and tow links are some of the most popular modifications for the GT4 because Porsche people like to go fast on the track and these parts are gonna help it perform better on the track as well as on the street. However, I got a little secret for you. That's not the only reason I'm installing these. I'll explain, just keep watching. So behind me here are the Apex Race Parts SM10 wheels. These are the track wheels that I decided to get because you know what, I got sick of running my stock wheels at the track in autocross. So these wheels are great because they are 19 inch, which means cheaper and possibly easier to find tire sizes and a little more protection of the rim. Uh, they're flow formed, not forged, so they're not the strongest wheels, but they've done everything they can to make them pretty strong. You can check out the specs. I'll have a link below, of course, and you can see all the features of these wheels. But I also like, because I do tend to whack a wheel every now and then, that they have a 50% off replacement guarantee. So if you mess one up, curb rash or whatever, you can buy one at half price. I think that is an awesome deal. Now Apex Race Parts has a reputation of thoroughly testing their designs. And these wheels were certainly made to work well on the GT4. And they've got a fitment guide, which is very detailed and tells you with these wheels and the different sizes they come in, along with different tire sizes, how they'll fit on your GT4 and any modifications you might need to make. Now they've recently updated their form and I'm glad they did because I was a little disappointed. Originally it said that these wheels would fit on my GT4. So I bought the 11 inch rears and the nine inch fronts. They are designed so that they will still fit the stock tow links on the car if you've got those. And uh, they, the offsets are supposed to be just right. And they've said that these tires, 305 in the rear, 265 in the fronts, Falcon RT660 tires, uh, should fit as long as you have two and a half degrees of camber up front. Well, I had two and a half degrees of camber and when I put these on, they were not gonna fit. I wasn't even gonna drive it afraid of fender damage. Now talking to Apex Parts, they're helpful in saying, you know, the top hat of your suspension should be adjusted all the way in to give you maximum fender clearance. And mine wasn't all the way in and most of my camber came from adding lower control arm shims, which is what a lot of people do. This pushes the lower section of the wheel out while the upper section stays kind of where it's at, so it's not so great for fender clearance. Either way, I had two and a half degrees of camber, but looking at it and talking to my alignment rep, uh, moving the top of the suspension all the way into the furthest adjustment, we still didn't think it was gonna fit, and I still have my doubts. I'll show you why later. So now the Apex Race Parts fitment guide does say that you should have camber plates and at least two and a half degrees of camber. Well, I wish I would have known that in the first place because I got these and they didn't fit. And now what am I supposed to do, right? I could pay to have these dismounted and sell them at a loss and find new tires. And there's not a lot of tires out there uh, in this sizes that I want or the type of tire that I need. So that was a complex situation. And I autocross under SCCA sometimes and I wanted to stay in the stock class and upgrading suspension parts will kick you out of that class. However, I came to the conclusion that, you know what, more than anything these days, I am uh, autocrossing with Porsche Club and the class the GT4 is in, you can do suspension mods. So I said, all right, I'll bite the bullet. And that's why we're here today, folks. We are gonna put some suspension parts on the car, not just to make these wheels fit, but also our car is gonna handle a lot better making us faster at autocross and faster on the track if you're shooting for lap times. So what we're installing today on the front will be the Terret Engineering Offset Monoball Camber Plates. Camber plates are essentially just replacements for the top mount of your GT4 suspension, but that attachment point at the top isn't right in the middle anymore. It's slightly offset towards the inside of the car, thus giving a new default position of more camber. From there, you can still adjust the camber using the strut tower's elongated holes to give more or less camber from there, and you may no longer need those lower control arm shims. What's great about this is it's gonna give you more camber from the top of the wheel, giving you more gap here from the fender so you can fit those wider wheels on. These are the monoball attachment points, so that means more precise attachment to your car. It's gonna give you a better feel, especially in the steering. 
If you're interested in these Tarek camber plates, check out the link in the description below. For the rear of the car, we're installing the adjustable toe links from Tarret. Now, what do toe links do for camber? Well, you see, the stock suspension on the GT4 can do more than probably one and a half degrees of camber, but if you get to one and a half degrees, you kind of don't have the ability to keep the toe in check. What's toe? Well, toe is kind of like the steering for the rear of the car, except you don't steer it, you set it at an alignment. So it points the rear wheels in a certain direction, and how you do that will change how the car is stable in turns or not. Uh, so if you want to keep the toe in check and go beyond 1.5 degrees of camber, you need adjustable toe links. Toe links that have more adjustment than the stock toe links. So the Terrett ones are really cool because they have this sort of clamping adjustment method, makes it way easier for the alignment tech and we can do away with the uh, oval bolts that are generally used for toe adjustment in the car. Not only that, monoball attachment points so we know that it's going to feel better another benefit to having these toe links is they're going to help minimize bump steer what's bump steer bump steer is like when you hit a bump um, or when you slam on the brakes and the rear end of the car rises it tends to create a little instability especially here in the gt4 so uh, they have found that these uh, adjustable toe links can minimize the effects of bump steer it won't get rid of it completely but i think it's gonna help all right, so enough tech talk. Let's get this car over to Elite Performance where they're gonna install the parts. I'll show you how it's done in case you wanna do it yourself or you just wanna learn about it and then they'll get it on the alignment rack and give this a proper alignment. Then we'll bring the car home and talk about how these wheels fit, if they fit. All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> Swapping out the camber plates is fairly straightforward. Thomas here starts by supporting the wheel assembly, then disconnecting the sway bar end links. He then zips off the center nut from the shock, releases the pressure, and then removes the other three nuts holding the plate in place. Swaps in the new plate, throws all the nuts back on, and reconnects the sway bar. Now let's move on to those rear toe links. These come out with just one bolt and a nut, plus you'll probably need a ball joint puller to get them off the spindle. Here you can see the eccentric bolt in washer. This was the factory toe adjustment. We're gonna be removing this all together because we don't need this adjustment and we're gonna replace it with the Terret lockout kit. Here it is fully installed in the car. You don't need the eccentric bolt anymore because the Terret links have their own adjustment. Just use a triple square to release the clamps and then you can make an adjustment like a turnbuckle to adjust the length. Thomas tries to match the length of the stock toe link so that the alignment tech has an easier time setting up the car. Next, he'll do the other side and then everything will be installed. We'll throw the wheels back on, take it for a test drive and get it on the alignment rack. back the car is safe in the garage with new parts and an alignment okay i can't keep up the charade anymore just so you know the beginning of this video where you saw the car it already had the parts it was already aligned it's the magic of youtube don't believe everything you see anyway yeah it's been weeks uh but uh we're filming the intro and conclusion and i wanted to tell you about how the new setup is so let me uh, throw you some b-roll and we'll talk about it so after getting the car home, you could definitely see that the beefy wheels and tires were making the car look much more aggressive. But how do we finally get them to fit? So remember, I already had two and a half degrees of front camber to start with, and originally Apex had recommended that was enough. 
And then we threw those camber plates on, which brought the camber to three and a half degrees up front. Now, the camber plates were initially put in the mid position and the wheels still barely fit. Now, as you can see in these images, the test drive had to be done carefully as there was some rubbing. But once the car was on the alignment rack, Melody at Elite Performance said that she faced the challenge of finding more camber necessary to get the wheels to tuck under, as well as keeping the caster in check. She found that the front wheels were not staying centered up in the wheel well when she put the camber where she wanted to put it. So eventually we removed some of those shims that we had installed originally. This brought the lower control arm inward, giving a little more clearance, and she tucked the top section of the camber plate bolts all the way inward. And now we have three degrees of camber up front and everything seems to fit. Even the caster was sorted out. The rear wheels fit just fine once the camber was dialed in at a final 2.4 degrees of negative camber and the toe was at 1 16th of an inch. So here's the final alignment specs. Once they're done, pause the video if you want to have a good look. Now I'm confident that there's no way that this tire and wheel setup would have worked without the extra parts from Terrid Engineering and the quality alignment from Elite Performance, and I'm glad Apex has updated their fitment guide to show that you do need camber plates and that two and a half degrees of camber up front. Also, after throwing on the stock wheels, I have to say that the look is a little bit underwhelming now. The front wheels are narrower, and so they look really tucked under the fender. Visually, this street stance just isn't so hot. And this is with seven millimeter spacers up front. So I think I may have to get some bigger spacers. All right, folks, that is the tires, wheels, and suspension video for the GT4. I have to say, the car has been handling beautifully. I got to test it out at the track at Laguna Seca and did an autocross day. Tons of grip, very well balanced. Love these tires, but I have to say, it's still all a very tight fit. On the street, hitting a serious dip, I did feel all the wheels seem to rub up in the fenders. And on the track, fully loaded in turns, the rear wheels are rubbing. Uh, on the frame, on the inside of the fender. I think it, what's happening is that under compression, the toe comes in a little bit and the tires end up rubbing there. Even though when the car just sits level on the ground, there's plenty of clearance there. So uh, keep that in mind. This wheel and tire setup is very tight, even with my aggressive suspension uh, camber setup. So you may wanna consider 295s in the rear or even 285s. I think that would be a really good balance too with 255 tires up front. All right, if you appreciated this video, you can now give me super thanks. That would be amazing. It's a button down below by the like button and you can donate to the channel to help support this video and future videos. But if you don't do that, at least hit the like button for me. Consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you can uh, be notified of future Porsche content. Thanks again to Elite Performance as well as Terret Engineering for helping make this video possible. Thank you so much for watching the Jeff Fioli channel. We'll see you next time.